Hey everyone, Alex here at The Code Wolf again. And today we've got a pretty straightforward video about working with forms with Blazor server-side rendering. So let's dive right in. To kick things off, just a quick reminder to please hit subscribe or like to support the video and the channel. It really helps out a lot. All right, so in the browser here, we have two different forms, and I wanna showcase multiple forms because that'll get into a few additional concepts that we'll wanna look at with server-side rendering. So we have a customer contact and a business contact, and we can see those two forms over on the right here as well. And when we submit either of these, we should get a confirmation code. Now at the moment, I'm actually using Blazor server with Signal R circuits to render this form. So if we add that attribute at the top here, this render mode interactive server, that's gonna simulate the Blazor server signal R circuits we've always had, and then we'll see what happens when we try to render the same form with server-side rendering. And for more information on these different rendering techniques, such as server-side rendering versus Blazor server with signal R, I have a bunch of videos on my channel about the different Blazor hosting models and .NET 8, so be sure to check those out for more information. So if I put in a name here and uh, just submit this form, then we get this nice message that says, thanks customer Bob for submitting, since this came from the customer form. And if we fill out this other form here and submit that, that'll say, thanks business Joe for submitting. So both of these forms submit correctly and our data was bound properly, so it gives us our name back. Everything works just fine with these Blazor server signal R circuits. Well, let's see what happens when we remove this attribute. So I'll save that and we'll get our auto uh, hot reload over here, which is nice. So now let's see if I try to submit the same form. And remember, this is just using straight Blazor server-side rendering since we got rid of our signal R circuit. And you'll see we actually get this error message. So it says, the post request does not specify which form is being submitted. Uh, to fix this, ensure form elements have a form name attribute. So let's stop our app and see what we have to do to get this working in Blazor server-side rendering. So the first thing that we need to do is to give our form a name. So when you're working with Blazor server-side rendering, you have to give your forms a name so that the app understands how to bind that info over on the server. So let's just call this uh, customer, since this is a customer form. And then on our business form, we can call this business, of course. And the second thing we have to do, this won't work on its own, uh, is that we actually have to give some more additional information on how to handle the model binding for this. So on our customer info, there's this attribute called supply parameter from form. And in here, we can pass in our matching form name. So I'll call this customer. And so this name will link up to the form name on our form. And so I'll copy this and change this to business. So this will match up to our business form name. And so each of these two properties will get the respective bindings, and this should work as expected. Now, the reason I'm showing this with two different forms is that by default, this attribute here is actually optional. So if we only had one form, we could just give it a name up here and it'll just bind to this attribute. You still need uh, the attribute here, but it'll bind to this property um, whether or not you pass in the form name. But because we have two forms, we have to specify this parameter here on our supply parameter from form attribute. So when you have two forms, it's required to put the name both here and on your object. But if you only have one form, it's technically only required on the form and not on the attribute. I think that's really confusing. So my recommendation would be to always just uh, put a form name on both your property that you're binding to and on the form itself. Um, and what's also interesting is that if we run this app, then our existing form will just start working again. Uh, that's all we have to do to migrate forms from our uh, Blazor server or WebAssembly setup to Blazor server-side rendering. We just have to add that name. So if we go back here and I fill out this form again, you can see, of course, now it works successfully. We get our message back and that's all being handled on the server. So if we were to open up our browser tab, and if we look at our network, and we switch to all here, we can see that yes, that whole response is coming back, and this is a full loop to the server. So there's no WebAssembly or server signal R uh, circuits going on here. 
Now, if we test out our business contact form, one interesting thing here is that we do get our uh, success message correctly, but you'll notice it didn't list both success messages like it did with uh, server signal R. And that's because remember this page is going all the way back to the server and being rendered and sent back. It's essentially a stateless loop. So it only understands the context of that current loop. When we're using Blazor WebAssembly or server signal R, that's all happening either in the browser or over a circuit. And so it maintains that context of both forms. These are useful things to be aware of when you're building pages with these different hosting models is understanding what data they keep track of for you. So that's about it. Thanks so much for watching and please hit subscribe or like to support the channel. And I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.